Oh my god, you know how I said episode 2 was like watching your parents have an argument? Well, this one starts off the day after the night before, if you know what I mean. Like, everyone wakes up and the whole place still smells like spilled red wine and ashtrays. Everyone feels really bad. Everyone feels super awkward for all the horrible shit they said. And it's just oh, awkward. Hi, and welcome back to the inside of my head. Let's carry on talking about Primal Season 2 with, of course, spoilers aplenty. Episode 2 was definitely a nerve shredder in that it split our duo up, putting them in a situation where they made new friends and alliances, which in turn brought them into this sort of conflict with each other. And that was plenty painful to watch, wasn't it? But check out that vid for more detail and make sure you subscribe if you aren't already, because I'm going to be talking about each and every episode of Primal as they're released. But just before we begin with episode 3, a subscriber called Madness and <laughs> Sorry, I forgot your name, so I had to add it in afterwards. Flag something that I wanted to talk about at the very end of episode 2 there was this shot with the two white birds who had started the ep squabbling over a worm and the last shot showed them cuddling up and snuggling and basically patching up. Now I took this to be a sign that Spear and Fang's friendship had come full circle too and they would probably start episode 3 as friends again. But Madness ends. commented saying that he interpreted it as a contrast between the birds and Spear and Fang. And on further reflection, I think he might be right because it would really be weird if everything that happened in episode two just got swept beneath the carpet. But there's only one way to find out which way this is going to go. So let's get stuck right in. Did I put a spoiler warning in here already? Okay, well, regardless, here's another one. <laughs> Sorry, that happens sometimes. <clears throat> Episode 3 is called Dawn of Man, and it very much starts beneath the cloud of hurt that was caused in the last app, and the wounds are still very fresh and unhealed. It seems like Fang is the one that's more pissed off of the two, and Spear is the one who's feeling all the guilt. There is a reconciliation of sorts, but they haven't got time to let it all fully heal because they quickly find a cave full, and I mean full, of cave paintings indicating that there's a large civilization out there somewhere. There's depictions of large hunting parties. And I mean, I think this scene was in the trailer, so most people will know it already. But it's here that we really feel Spears longing to be around other humans. And I'll talk about that again later. Or right now, actually, because this is a feeling that hits home even harder when he discovers the remnants of a village whose inhabitants have either fled or... Well, I mean, we don't really know what's happened to them at this stage. But this causes Spear to pray to the moon. And I thought this was really interesting. Definitely not something we've seen the character do before. And, you know, that always fascinated me. You know, how early people interpreted the world around them based on the information they had at the time. Like, they saw this giant grey thing hanging in the sky. And, of course, it must be some kind of deity, right? And it makes me wonder about all the assumptions we're making right now about space and black holes and stuff and about how, and about how that's all just based on the info that we have right in front of us now. And how how in centuries to come, future people might look back at us and go, ha ha ha, those 21st century idiots, they thought there was a black hole in the middle of the galaxy. Well, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked to all hell. But you know what I'm saying, that this is an interesting scene. Because it is, it's interesting. But then who shows up at their cave? Two large blokes riding grizzly bears and carrying rather large axes, adorned with the scorpion sigil. Now these two guys are pretty big and pretty fearsome, but they're pretty soundly overpowered by our heroes. One of them does a runner before, well, I mean, getting, let's just say, getting very familiar with a large, gnawing set of T-Rex teeth. Let's just put it that way. Nom! And oh yeah, Spear gets an upgrade, tossing his spear aside. What? And taking that warrior's sword. Seriously though. What? Do we still get to call him Spear though? I ain't calling him Sword. I don't like the way it's out. It doesn't have a very good ring to it. Nah, he stays Spear for me. Our heroes trace back. Wait, I've lost my place in my notes. Do, 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 do. Our heroes trace back the warrior's tracks to a village where Spear actually does find Mira. And that was a surprise. I thought this moment would be kept for the last episode. But you know, no, here she is in episode three already. And would you look at this sap? Uh, look at him. Look at that face. Look. Oh. But of course, it's not going to be that simple, is it? She does not want to leave without all the other slaves that are being kept in the village too. Ah. So Spear has to deal with all of them now and then they all leave the village together and just as I was thinking, wow, that was actually kind of easy. Wasn't there guards or anything? Then they see that they have to walk through this thick, scary fog hanging in the valley full of big, snarly, unseen horrors. And if Frank Darabont taught us anything, you don't go into the mist. And also, if you want to escape prison, all you need is a poster of Rita Hayworth or something. I don't really remember that movie. And that's where the episode ends. And it was fine, not mind-blowing in any way, but a necessary stepping stone, I felt. The big red-headed dudes riding grizzlies were awesome and definitely the highlight of the episode. But the most important thing to me was seeing that side of Spear that longed to be around other humans. We are social creatures after all, and after the death of his family, Spear has only really had Fang for company. 
quite curious to hear what you guys thought of that moon scene, like where he prays to the moon. What do you think that it was that Spear was praying for in that moment? Like, he looks around him before he kneels, kind of indicating to me that this is a very vulnerable moment for him. Maybe as he's asking this greater power for some help getting what his heart truly desires, or I mean, I don't know. But it's funny how when he sees that he's being watched by an owl, he gets kind of angry and chases it away, like it's just invaded his privacy or something. This was a very intimate moment for him. And then after all that said and done, he walks away and he looks back over his shoulder at the moon, kind of disappointed. But interestingly, it's right after this prayer that the grizzly men show up, which in turn lead him to Mira. So maybe the god of the moon did hear his prayer after all. I mean, we know that there are supernatural forces at play in this series. Anyway, make sure you let me know what you thought of this set. For me, it's probably one of the weaker ones, actually. I'm going to watch it again, though. Um, considering the standard of this show overall, it was still pretty good, just slightly weaker by its own high standards. Do you know what I mean? Okay, you guys, I've got to leave it there for now. Please hit subscribe for more Primal reviews as well as a bunch more random AF stuff. You guys know the score by now. There is no rhyme or reason to anything I do, and don't expect that to change anytime soon. <laughs> so let me invite you to get out of my head, and I will see you very soon for the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and cheerio, bye!